Well, ho, and welcome back to uh, Commander Nutter's Guide to the Galaxy Live. And in this one, we're going to be looking at scanning. No, we're not going to be looking at scanning at all. We're going to be looking at Matt's What I Want. Uh, and basically, that means getting the materials that you want from planets. And to do that, we're going to be using our Anaconda and SRV and some interesting systems. And the first thing I need to do is just make sure that everything's hunky dory with the stream. And we will go from there. So I've got your nice little scene set up. I'm going to be looking at. Turn that off. Um, a little scene set up here whilst I just check the stream's working okay. And of course, if and when somebody joins, if they let me know that things are sounding and looking good, that would be awesome. I think we'll be good to go. Now, I was um, going to try and find a nebula, uh, but where I am right now, there aren't really any. So, I've opted for another option, and that option is uh, a planetary nebula. Because if we're going to be going looking for materials, we want to be doing it in a system that looks pretty, right? So where we're heading um, I'll just show you where we are right now uh, it's just uh, a trinary as I like to call it orbit of three very large gas giants very pretty um, but where we're gonna head off to is uh, a little planetary nebula I know because I'm trying to keep up with the distance world distant worlds uh, uh. Ooh. I think we might be making a detour <laughs> that is definitely a size 1 A class star and this is what happens when you're an explorer um, I'm just going to make a little detour <laughs> sorry it's live but I want to go and check this one out. Looks nice. Looks interesting. Uh, now I have got. I think I've got bookmarked where I want to go. Yeah, and all these black holes as well. Um, I've just seen a a size, as I like to call it, size one. Um, come on, focus. A size one A class. Um, and these sorts of things can't be uh, left now where's it gone I just saw it where did it go that's it there in it surely no that's a size 3b class I quite literally just saw a size one A class, and I thought I can't leave that one there. Uh, where is that gone? So anyway, uh, I'll find it in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, the idea of this particular live stream is to show you how to find the materials that you want. And now I've got too much pretty stuff to look at. Let's try coming out of the galaxy map and back in because uh, it was just staring at me. That's the size 3. Sorry about this. I do tend to get distracted as an explorer. There it is. That's the one. We're going to make a brief detour. Uh, you never know, we might find what we want. There is one, I don't want a neutron star, what is it doing? I want that one. Thank you. Right, well it's an interesting little spot we have uh, in the middle of here. Anyway, let's leave these gas giants to it. Just 
just check out this A-Class and then we'll carry on to my little planetary nebula because I'd like to do some resource gathering uh, and get materials that you want and I'll be showing you how the best way to go about that in this video I don't need to charge my frame shift drive, just get out of here. Right. <clears throat> a class blue supergiant. Who doesn't like a supergiant star? We've got to stop by to have a look at that first, surely. This is what happens when you're live exploring. So A class is like the third in the whole spectrum of things in terms of stars so it's big and this is a super giant so whoa yep super giant confirmed yeah. okay it's not that big a solar mat solar radius that looks like 200 and what was it 206 light seconds to the center um I think average is normally about 40 so it is a big one um, but by no means the biggest I've ever seen and uh, we'll skip a bit of fuel and uh, just check one other thing so yeah uh, welcome to the stream we're gonna be looking at how to get the materials that you want hence the title Matt's what I want Have we got anything interesting here to look at? No, not really. I'll scan one object just so you get the... Uh... Oh. And that's ringed, whatever it is, I believe. Oh, yes. And it is indeed pretty. Um, but just to give you an idea of scale, I just wanted to map one of those. Uh, there we go, that's, what, that's where we are. And that's what I just detected. Quick rundown: uh, 48 solar, ra solar radius, so that's uh, 48 times bigger than our own sun. Very nice. But let's crack on because this video is all about getting the mats that you want. And I happen to be on a little journey. Now, I wanted to do this with a nebula nearby so it would be a little bit more pretty to watch. Um, but for some unknown reason, where I am at the moment is kind of very sparse in terms of nebula. So I'm going for a planetary nebula. Let's head over that way. And we will start gathering the materials that you want. Um, if you are in the stream and you're watching it, if you could just let me know that the sound, audio, video and all that good stuff is working fine, that would be much appreciated. If anything is too loud, let me know. If you want to a neutron star then. 26 it's a busy system and the place where we're heading it, it's only four jumps so it's about 2,000 light years but four jumps uh, nothing of interest for me let's crack on to another neutron so the method of gathering materials that you want that I'm about to show you has only become possible since the 
last update where they introduced the ability to find points of interest on planets. And these would be geological and biological. And that's what we're going to be using to gather our materials. And as usual, of course, if you've got any questions you want to ask, please do. Oh, you're joking. That's so frustrating when that happens. Charge up. Thank you. Uh, let's just have a quick look, see what we got. Nothing interesting. Good. Let's carry on. Three jumps. Won't take long. I hope everyone's having a great day. Hi Jules, streams all good, excellent, that's what I like to hear, thank you very much for your feedback, and I hope you're having a great day. Now, the reason why the stream started a little bit late is because uh, Distant Worlds is on mass at the moment on the group that I was in so I've come out of there and gone solo to avoid any disruption for your entertainment and nothing up there for me The only problem with being around the core and doing stuff, well, you can just about see my planetary nebula there. Yeah, but being around the core, things are a little bit too bright sometimes, which can spoil the view. It's. Is that a dwarf? It's a neutron star, a very tame one. Anything of interest to look at? No. Nope. Right, let's just charge and go. Nearly there. I would have been here sooner, but like I say, uh, I had to disconnect from the group because Distant Worlds is about to do a mega jump somewhere and the server was being a bit flaky. Statsy, hey again, dude. Hey Statsy, thanks for joining. Uh, we're nearly at our preferred destination. Slightly sidetracked by a large A-class star system, so I just have to check it out because I'm an explorer, obviously. But we will crack on with the uh, the key theme of tonight, which is finding the materials you want. Always a pleasure. Ooh. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to have you along. Ooh -er. So, Jules and Statsy, uh, you both play Elite, I take it, do you? Be interested to know. There's a bit of an aura in this system, isn't there? It seems very blue. Come on. Oh, whilst it's thinking about it, uh, Icy Body is. And gas giants. Not for me. Fred Shift Drive operating beyond safety limits. Fred Shift Drive supercharged. 
super. Oh, I've just realised. I just said there's a bit of a blue aura in this system, and of course that's because we've actually already reached the nebula that I wanted to get to. Oh, I hate that though. Look at that. This is the uh, star cubes. Star cubes of elite. Um, so let's quickly just uh, scan what's in here because we're actually we are in the. Uh, target system but I don't want to stay in the system because these planetary nebula systems look so much better from the outside than they do the inside and what we got here come on where are you that's a non non ring no ring there we go if you've watched my videos before you'll know how I know that that didn't have any rings uh, 22, quite a few, but never know, might be something interesting. That's got rings. No, it's not. That looked like it had rings. Uh, is that one done? Yep, right, okay. Let's quickly drift around. So, yeah, in order to get the materials that you want, um, you do need to use planetary points of interest. But I'm going to give you all you need to know about which ones to go for. Uh. Start see. Oh yes, three and a half thousand hours on only two. Oh, two accounts and one on Xbox. That is very similar to me because I, I'm not sure how many hours I've done. I'll have to look at the stats. Um, but I have two accounts on the PC and one on the PlayStation 4. Uh, and that's a PS4 Pro, which I have done the odd stream from. I still struggle with using a PS4 controller though. Being a, a hot ass type player. Uh, do we have a close orbiting? Yeah. No, I will need to scan these anyway because we will quite honestly get on with the job at hand of finding materials. Um, <coughs> But systems like this, you need to scan them all, really. To see if there's anything worth looking at. As it's such a nice system, anyway, with the planetary nebula, which you haven't seen yet. But you will very shortly, and it's a it's a very nice planetary nebula, this one. It's not your, one of your common ones. That If that's not ringed, I will eat my hat. Are we ready? Okay, my hat's safe. That's ringed. Alrighty. Let's see, buddy. Mm -hmm. That's not ringed. That's for sure. I'm sure I saw something over here as well. Last one. Hooray! System scan complete. Uh, it's Commander Bouncy Stickman. I salute you, Sue. Uh, salute you too, sir. Hello, Commanders. Uh, right. Okay, let's get out of this view for a moment and just see what our system map looks like. Here we go. I was keen to see 1.4 days and oh, no, that's no good right let's just map this uh, gas giant while we're here um, and then we're gonna just nip next door from this system and then I'll show you uh, the planetary nebula that I'm in and it's quite a stunner I have to say
So I hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, if you're watching my stream earlier, by the way, that system that I could see, it turned out to be um, a distant nebula, quite a, a famous one. It's a massive um, cluster of O-class stars. But because they've changed so much in terms of the graphics, um, it looks nothing like it used to from a distance. So it wasn't the droids I was looking for. Jubals, you've got two accounts as well. I'll have a look at my, my stats in a minute. The thing is, the trouble with my stats, and I'm not sure if everyone's the same, but how many times have you left yourself drifting in space or sat on a planet and come back the next day? <laughs> it's like, well, I actually didn't play that long. It's just that I tend to leave my uh, computer sat there. Right, how to map a ringed gas giant. If you've not seen how I do this before, it won't take long. First part of your plan of attack is to make sure you're on the same level as the ring of the gas giant. Otherwise, it'll get in the way. Wait till your scanner stops saying out of range and put on the brakes. Like so. Enter the mode and it's 22 probes. Okay, so... Go for the horizon. Three and three. Near enough. Okay. I got twenty two probes. Let's try and make it easy and interesting. That one wasn't very tidy. Okay, so we've pretty much covered around the outside, uh, and we're on forty-seven percent. So I think if I fire one uh, there and there, there and there, and then on the back side the same. So that's just going past the horizon. There, 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 and there. Now hopefully that will scan the entire planet, or gas giant in this case. Let's look at the back end and see how we do. Will he do it? Confidence is high. Oh, that one wasn't that great. Bit, un bit shabby at the back, but he's done it. Oh, I lost, how many probes did I fire? <laughs> um, I think it was about, I'm not sure how many probes I fired. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. 12 probes was it? So nearly half the amount required anyway. Um, Jules. Oh, sorry, uh, Bouncy Stickman first. Um, are you partaking in Distant Worlds 2? Yes, I am. Um, I'm kind of doing my own thing now because I did Distant Worlds 1 and kind of been there and done that. But I am joining the fleet all. We'll meet up when I can. Uh, Jules. Never worked out my hours play before. Uh, Three thousand nine hundred eighty-six. Also two accounts. Yeah, and, we d and stats I have. I had a freaky thing happen on Elite. I fell asleep whilst <laughs> using the rear World Cup, and for a few seconds I thought I was in the game. Oh, sweet. Um. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I did say. Let's have a look. See how many hours I've done, and then I'll, I'll show you this nebula from the outside. Uh. So we want to go over here and over to the uh, codex commander bloody nutter i really should put a crash out on with that face uh time played 17 weeks six days eight hours if someone wants to calculate that uh feel free um so yeah 3.5 thousand hours so anyway, there you go, 17 weeks, 6 days, 8 hours, and that's my playtime. And look, I've still not done my combat rank. I suppose I'll do it at some point, but it's not something that I'm in a hurry for. There you go. Alright. Come out of there. And back to the game, because I want to show you the, uh, the nebula I'm sat in. 
Now, look, once you get inside a planetary nebula, which you can kind of make out a little bit there, the best thing to do is choose the closest system, which I'm going to do. And the closest system is that one, and it's 1.96 light years away. So we'll go there. And then you get to see what it's all about. Another interesting fact is I've not done um, VR yet. I'm, wait I'm waiting for Christmas <laughs> and someone to buy me one. My rig will just about cope with VR. Okay, so judging by uh, the fact that all of the planets have appeared instantly, it means that people have been here before a few times. Hey, thanks, Banksy Stickman. 17 weeks alone equals 2,800. Alright, so that means that um, Statsy, you're more of an expert than I am at Elite by statistics okay so what we're gonna do first of all is just see there's a, a water world already mapped have I been here before <laughs> what unless it's very close to the planet that'd be weird right now I do need to scan all these this time uh, the reason being is because uh, if we can and we've got the right sort of system I can show you how to get to the materials that you want uh, it's all part of the plan that's garbage oh it's not there's gonna be a okay let's see what else we've got here That's a yeah, no, I do want to get one, I really do. Um, but I thought it'd probably best to eat first uh, <laughs> uh, than get a VR headset. But it, it's on my shopping list, on my uh, my most wanted list anyway. I can't wait to look around a cabin on a ship. Be awesome. Sense of scale. I'm not sure if that's if it would work with space legs, but because um, I've got a, I don't know about you, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that they are going to actually do space legs because the ship models on the outside have changed, and there's lo lots of railings and stairs and lifts that have been added to the outside of the ship models. And why would you do that? Unless you're planning on doing space legs. <clears throat> right, we've scanned the entire system. Let's see what we're looking at. Oh, <laughs> what's going on there? That's weird. Are you telling me that I've been here before? <laughs> That's me! That's hilarious. Surely someone else must have been here. It's right next to the planetary nebula. So I have been here before. <laughs> and it's me. Oh my word, that's hilarious. <laughs> Why has not anyone else come here? It's right next to the nebula. What people are thinking they must do this. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, Stickman, uh, cockpits are huge in VR. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I can't wait to uh, have a look. Um, okay, yes, that's a yeah, I understand. Getting to elite in combat when you don't do combat at all is really difficult. Um, 
So you think space legs a bit of a white elephant? Yeah, no, I feel the same. I feel the same. Um, I think it'll be nice to walk around my ship, but to be honest, I don't walk want to walk any further than that. I don't want to walk on the planet's surface. I don't want to walk on a space station. I just want to look around my ship. That's all I want to do. And if that's where they what they do and leave it there, brilliant. And then cut scenes for everything else. Because um, I remember when they used to do the, uh, I think it was Frontier 2, uh, where you could walk into a bar and pick up jobs and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that was nice, but I don't want to walk there. I'd just appear there would be good for me. <laughs> Stood at the bar already with a drink in my hand. <laughs> but yes, it would be nice to walk around the ship. Absolutely. But leave it there. You know, we don't want any sort of star citizen. Um, you get a mission and it takes you an hour just to get back to your ship with the mission before you actually get in your ship. <laughs> That'd be a nightmare. Okay, I'm still struggling with the concept that no one else has come to this system apart from me. Uh, I have no idea when I last came here. It was a long time ago, obviously. Maybe it's a bug. Let's just try to go back in the map again. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm really surprised. <laughs> it's... Oh, look, and you can see, it's embarrassing, actually. You can see I cherry-picked that water world as well, look. Because <laughs> I did do the planet next to it whenever I came here. Oh, hilarious. Right. Okay, anyway, we've got some landables here. Uh, let's see if we can find something of interest. So, the first planet, no volcanism. Okay, so there may be biological on there, but we'll, st we'll go with uh, volcanism for now. No volcanism on that landable either. Oh, that's not looking good then, is it, for this system? No, no volcanism on that one either. Okay. Um... That means that this system is probably not very good. That's a shame because uh, what I want to do now is show that let's just get away from the main star because get light pollution. Uh, and I'll show you the planetary uh, nebula that we're right next to. Okay, I'll keep zooming out. I'll get an outside view because it'll probably look better like that. Uh, let's see, where are we? Let me know when you see a nebula. Oh, what's that there? Nice. See, now that planetary nebula is different to most. Um, and that's why I like it. Looks like a snake, doesn't it? Some might say potentially a little bit phallic. Oh, but look, spoiled by that star cube. <laughs> that's quite a harsh one, that. Um, anyway, that's the planetary nebula that we're next to. As you can see, that'll make a nice um, sky on a planet. That's that, see. I think a lot of people like the idea, but I think the resources. Should be spent on more content. Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, I do want. I, I do honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain if I could walk around my ship, but leave it there. That will do me. Walk around my ship. Fine. Teleport me everywhere else. Just let me have a look around my ship. And then once you've done that, you probably wouldn't um, go back to it. Imagine having to go and fix things manually by walking around your ship in an anaconda. How long does that take? Okay. Uh, I'm digressing, aren't I? Anyway, that's the planetary nebula. Um, this system's no good for us. So, I need to zoom in and find the next closest. F class would be nice. That's G. Is that F? Looks a bit bright for F. No, it is F. Right, I'm going to go for the F class. I like an F class system. Shame about that um, star cube. Immersion broken. Oh yeah, for those that are asking about distant worlds too, um, if you look at my ship name, <laughs> DW2 Heavy Support, number eight. I think I'm the only one, but I just thought eight would sound good. 
Oh, you're joking. This system's only got two stars in it. Okay, so I'm going to look at the system uh, galaxy map. Sorry, don't look at that. Right, there was another G class not far away, wasn't there? Uh, that one. Yep, let's go there. Fingers crossed. I'll tell you what I do think is going to be in the season, though, for sure. And that's going to be atmospheric landing. Man. Um, so yeah, really seriously, one star in the system. Um, well, they don't really have to rewrite the code because I'm pretty confident they uh, Frontier Days. Um, they started to make a first-person shooter, and that was using the Cobra engine. So I'm guessing they've got some assets already. Don't know how good it would have been, but it never got released. Um, but like I say, I mean, I'll be happy with walking around our ship there is um there is uh there is i might have to rename this video because we're not doing much uh material finding right now <laughs> but it, i just wanted to get live and chat to you guys and girls um but no there's also a video um that they did where you've got interaction with npcs um you know voice acted animated with avatars uh there's a a video out there somewhere on the youtube so which hints at space legs um, to a point so I think they've got the grounds for um, space legs but I just don't want it to become like a an important part of the game alright let's try and find a system with some bodies in it okay that's got three stars in it and uh, da -da -da, C10, C10, C10 that's not a lot of mass really so there's probably not going to be a lot in that as well uh, these um, system numbers here indicate like how much mass is in a system as well uh, so like, if it started with H that would be a really busy system but C is pretty sparse but I'm going to have a look anyway let's go and have a look Statsy, I'd love planetary landings. Well, we kind of have them already, Statsy, but uh, obviously without an atmosphere. I think with the atmosphere stuff, though, to be fair, um, there's a lot of challenges involved with that because, you know, space and systems and planets are just really weird. And I know that. David Braben was talking about um, going in gas giant clouds. Oh, you're joking. I told you it'd be sparse, didn't I? Because it was only a C class. Um, he was talking about going in gas giants, but do you know how fast those winds and stuff travel on those gas giants? We're talking thousands of miles an hour. Um, how, how do you how do you hand wave them surviving all that I don't know and the same goes for landing on another planet as well and the planet's got um, you know things like Mercury and Venus have all got really um, violent um, storms how do you survive that stuff uh, I guess they're going to have to come up with some uh, I've got a 50 credit fine in Colonia <laughs> where does that come from hilarious uh, right, let's try and find a system Sorry, I'm trying to find a system with some bodies in it. I need a higher number. Uh, D. Uh, D's not busy. Uh, C. Nope. Come on. Select. D. Come on. Come to Papa. D. Um, okay, it doesn't want to give us a good system, does it? 
Let's go with that one. It's got D5. And it's an F class. Go for DF5. Right. What's that one? Has that got a lot of mass in it? E. Not much more. If you know your alphabet. <laughs> it's not it's not too tricky once you get the uh, uh the thing is most of the mass will be the B class star. And it'll be really bright. Um oh, actually no one was that a B9? No, it won't be that bright actually. Alright, let's try that one. Yeah, Star Citizen's um, an interesting thing. It's very detailed, and um, the thing is, it's not procedurally generated, is it? And a lot of it's handcrafted, which is great for detail. Um, but yeah, the flight mechanics and that is all a bit weird. Oh, I knew it. It's all the B. It's all about the B. That's most of the mass in this system, I'll tell you now. You can take that to the bank. 2.5 solar masses. Okay, where's the inhabited systems around here? This is getting crazy. Uh, D. Let's try that. Most of these systems don't appear to have much uh, going on. I know I'm getting warm. I'll be fine. Yeah, Stickman, they've already done volumetric clouds. Yep. Uh, which is what you've seen in the new... Um, stellar notable objects and um, also the... Volcanism on planets that we've got right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, I just like you said there's even wind that pushes you around. Well, there is if you get on top of a geezer, right? <laughs> um, but in terms of atmosphere, we've not experienced any wind yet, of course. So maybe, yeah, with the. Um, wow, what's that going to do, though? A thousand mile an hour wind while you're in a SRV. It's going to end up interesting. Right. Come on, give me some uh, landables that we can go and look at. I see body. Is that a terraformable? So I just need to adjust my. Scan it out, right? Okay. I might have to rename this video randomly looking for materials at this rate. Uh, right. What else we got over here? What's the high metals? Please don't be behind the star. Thank you. Twenty-two bodies. Almost looks ringed, but it's not. Maybe those stormy ones will simply kill you. Um, <laughs> maybe. Um, I'm sure they'll have some sort of. Uh, you know, um, what would you call it? I mean, we've got an atmospheric landing type um, module, no doubt, that will protect you from the violent storms and winds on a atmospheric planet. And they'll give it some jazzy name. <clears throat> and of course, um, that release is also going to be paid content, right? So I'm guessing that you'll need to buy 
an add-on that will give you the atmospheric something or other doodah that protects you from uh, being instantly annihilated by a thousand mile an hour wind or something. Uh, atmospheric calibration computer or who knows and pay content possibly as well to enable you to walk around your ship nearly there we do one more All oh, right, yeah, the storms as well in the um, notable phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, they've got all the tools in there to push you around um, in terms of, you know, weapons and creatures and all that good stuff, but a proper atmosphere is still going to be a challenge. Because it's not an object. Oh, look at this. One landable. 104,000 light seconds away and I bet it's not even got any it's not even got any volcanism what's going on I've been sabotaged by the galaxy well that's a biggie let's go and have a look at a big star while we're here then eh the thing is yeah those are all influenced by like a small object we're talking about an atmosphere which you know is entire planetary weather system it's a little bit more than um, an object that can push you so there's going to be a lot of thought into it I guess when you look at those earth-like worlds and you see those systems and storm systems they're gonna to have to so somehow recreate those Come on! Not one, not one planet, right? Uh, what system are we in? Oh, what's that there? Shiny. Uh, did I see what mass that was? D. I don't think that's gonna have a lot in it either. What? Are you joking? Oh, mind you, I did end up in front of a large star, which probably was obscuring where I wanted to go next. So let's see, we're nearly an hour into the stream and we haven't found a landable. <laughs> I think we'll call this more general um, a stream. And all because I wanted to show you. Um, a decent sky whilst I did the uh, material gathering. That's another biggie. How far away is that? Oh, that's not that big. 140 odd light seconds. Four bodies, really? Alright. Uwe the body. What will it be? Landable. Where's it? Also, see an orbit path over here somewhere. Let's try that one. Mm, there it is. System scan complete. Oh, that's got lava on it, so there's no way we'll be landing on that one. Let's have a look. Uh, won't be landing on there either. Anyway, that's a large uh, star for you. By nowhere near, or by no means massive, but pretty big. Statsy, if I used EDDB to find landables, I have, but I. Uh, 
I just wanted to find something close by to this uh, this planetary nebula because there's there's no um, nebula around here for some reason. D. C. Way up. Okay, there's got to be a selection of landables here. Let's go there. That's what you call a fuel scoop, isn't it? <laughs> Got all those stars. Landing on a water world, will we? Where is it over there? I think that's. It's an icy body, it might be landable. Okay, what we got? Scores on the doors. <sighs> it's not our day today, is it? Is that terraformable? No. So we're not going to bother heading over to look any more than that. Let's see. Let's give it a go. So I'm interested to know, um, I just knew that was going to be the case. Um, those that are watching, have you uh, got the lifetime backers package, free upgrades forever uh, kind of module, or um, a slightly more recent in terms of uh, having elite? Something over there. Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh. Right, I'm gonna have to cheat, I think. Uh, I, I can't want to. Oop, sorry. I can't be bothered to work with that system anymore, but what I will do is uh, get my notepad open. And I'll make sure I find a busy system by using the system names 
So let's choose one. So we have uh, P H R O I F L Y U A E and let's go with that as well. N M W that'll be enough. We're gonna take that. We're gonna put it in here like so and go for a H. There are no H's. Okay, let's go with G. Really? Okay, let's go with E. Ah. Uh, right. Is that seriously the closest system? 104. So E means it's quite a populated system, by the way. Oh, that was 44 light years. Could have probably done with that one. 48. Still quite far away. If you're wondering what I've done there, um, I put in a system name uh, and sector name, and then the next letter, in this case E, is um, on a scale of um, A to H, is how how much mass is in the system, and so E is kind of in the middle, but it should be enough to actually have a, enough systems to make it landable. Twenty six light. Take me closer to it. Thirty-nine. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Come on. So the sector I'm in obviously is a little bit short on uh, massive systems. Thirty-two. What's it found? Definitely had stuff closer than that. Oh, I just saw a massive. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing what you spot. Um, come on. Stats, so you don't have the season pass, but you wish you had. Yeah, I'm a backer, so um, I should get all the uh, releases. Let's try uh, E2. Looking for E2. Okay. That was my space phone there, by the way. Jules, um, you did get um, what the season pass when it was still pre-release, or did you get the beta? Because if you've got the beta, uh, and you've how many play hours have you had, Jules? As a matter of interest, because I think if you get more than forty hours out of a game, then and and you enjoyed those forty hours, I suppose is important as well. I mean, if you played it for 40 hours, it must have been pretty good, right? Um, then I think you've probably got your money's worth. You know, one pound an hour. Sorry as I'm flicking around all this and making you dizzy. I'm just trying to find something interesting to go to. And 
I wanted a decent backdrop, but what's that? Uh, don't think I'm going to get it, and because I'm close to the core, there's so many shiny stuff, so much shiny stuff to look at. Alright, let's go back to this a minute. Okay, what we're going to do is going to go for the big daddy. Oh, wow, where's that going? That's definitely a big daddy. Uh, let's get the details on that. Oh, come on. Should we go to that super massive star instead? Uh, there's a lot of mass there, trust me. Uh, and it's a H0. Let's go there. It'll be nice to look at, eh? Uh, and what I did there is, is that I took the system or sector name and then put AA hyphen A, which is like the, the biggest mass systems in that sector. And that's the code for it, AA hyphen A. And then H is like super primo big o mister no messing about it's only five jumps let's go it's rock and roll stats here i didn't know why i didn't get it in the first place what uh elite dangerous i guess is what you mean um you played the original on the bbc micro <coughs> yeah so did i <laughs> Uh, so obviously we're of the same uh, generation. Um, you know what? I didn't know about um, Elite Dangerous, um, the Kickstarter, because I played Frontier as well, and Frontier 2. But it wasn't very well publicised, and I just managed to get in at the last minute. Um, and therefore I got, um, what was it, a beta backer thing, so I got like a lifetime of, I mean it cost me like a 150 150 British pounds but that gives me access to everything as and when it gets released um, but I didn't find it was very well organ um, very well publicized the Kickstarter I kind of stumbled across it and I thought hang on a minute are you on about elite that game that I used to play the little wireframe thing on my BBC and uh, obviously I looked into it and as soon as I realised they were like um, bringing it up to date with the graphics and everything else um, obviously what we're playing now I was like <laughs> take my money please oh man yeah um, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm old men um, let's say experienced um, I still have all my faculties, that's a ring to whatever it is. Ammonia based life. I wonder if it's Thargoids. Why am I. St I've gone into exploration mode now, and I, I was meant to be dashing off to see that giant system, wasn't I? I think I should crack on with that, really. Uh, yeah, I've tagged a few systems, let's move on. Jules, oh yeah, I love the game. I played 3,900 myself. Uh, I was meaning the money I paid for the lifetime pass versus the cost of the paid content so far. Right, yeah. See, the thing is, I, for example, if I was to go down um, on a big night out with the lads. Uh, down to the old space bar, as you do, try not to break immersion. I could spend, you know, upwards of 80 to 100 credits on a night out, no problem. And that night out lasts 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours, 12 hours, if it's uh, special. Probably only remember about half of those. But. If you look at the game, if you've spent 3,000 hours, then come on, you must have had your money's worth, surely. 
you know, if you'd have uh, paid 500 British pounds uh, for that pass and you've played that many hours, then I would say you've got your money's worth, in my opinion. Just my opinion, though. <laughs> <laughs> Statsy, uh, oh, I like that experience. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I, uh, I know how to go out for a good night. That's it. What we're talking about, right? Experience, and of course, yeah, and hundred pounds in a night, easy. <laughs> well, if you include the taxi, <laughs> absolutely, a space taxi, obviously for immersion purposes. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, three jumps. Let's go. Oh, was I going to have a look? Shall we have a look? Uh, mm, nothing interesting that really gets me going there. Let's keep going. Oh, it's really nice to have all you guys along tonight. It keeps, uh, keeps a young, young man like me uh, happy whilst we go and try and find a landable planet. I can't believe that we're still looking. <laughs> it's like the search for Spock. Anyway, at least we're going to take you to a nice system now. Never been there before. Um, and also, you learn how to use a sector name and then the following code, in this case, AA hyphen A. And I'll guarantee loads of people have been here before. I mean, I've not, but I don't really do that much type of it, that type of exploring. But as it makes good, um, good viewing, I thought we'd go off to have a look at a really big system. And this one is the biggest in this sector that we're heading to. And I know that, and I've not even been there yet. How clever is that? Fuel scooping complete. Uh, some quick look. Uh, nope. Let's move on. These are not the droids. I'm off to a neutron. Two jumps to go. Next jump is 288 light years. Only possible there if I scoop from the neutron jet cone. And the next jump will take us to the biggest system in this sector. This entire sector. Are you not excited? Are you not like just gripping onto something tightly? as we uh, are on the verge of jumping to the biggest system in this sector and we've never been there before I don't know what I'm gonna find I'm guessing there'll be a star at least there we go we're supercharged we can do a 288 light year jump now um, but if it was further how could how much further could we go Three hundred and twelve light years is my max jump at this point, and that's with an SRV and stuff, and repair limb pits and all sorts. Right. Uh, what is that? See that little things annoy me sometimes, and that um, FSS activated gets in the way of what I want to see, and it sits up there for like ten seconds. So we're going to a blue super giant. Hold on to your uh, hats and anything else. It's going to be big. Four, 
There we go then. The biggest system in this sector and it's got a super giant. Oh, look at that. You know it's big when nothing moves when you arrive. <laughs> Whoa, that is big. Oh, it's the only thing here. 1,500 light seconds. That is truly massive. Absolutely massive. I can't begin to tell you how big that is. Uh, put it this way, if that star there was in our solar system, and that is in Sol, as in um, you know where Earth is, if that star was in our system, then I think Jupiter would be inside that star. That's how big it is. <laughs> it's ridiculously huge. Uh, that just doesn't do it any justice whatsoever. Uh, let's have a look. It's 371 times the size, not in mass, the radius of our own star. Uh, and 67 times the mass. Wow. Okay, so let's try H1 then. Maybe we can get a bit more lucky with that. Oh, I need to come out of the uh, system map. Anyway, that is a huge, huge, huge star. Hey, huge! That's why they call it a super giant. Right, um, yeah, so let's see if we can get a bit more lucky. I'm going to paste that system in again. I'm going to go for H again. Uh, but we'll get the next one after. Is that the only one? Okay. That is the only H class. Okay, let's go G. Really? No G? Ah, uh, I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. Schoolboy error. Whoops, a daisy. Let's paste that back in again. Um, we weren't going for that. We we're going for AA, weren't we? AA hyphen A. H. Come on, let's see if there's more than one. Oh, there is. Oh, there's quite a few. Oh. Okay, let's get some. Uh, Get some control here, it's going all over the place. Uh, H1. A black hole. Is it a black hole? No, that's not what I just found. Don't worry when you see a thousand light years, there's so many neutron stars around it doesn't take long at all to get to these places. Ten jumps? You're kidding me. How can it be ten jumps? Really? Alright, well okay. We'll skip that one then. A A hyphen A H two. Nine hundred and twenty eight light years. H three six hundred and thirty three, that's more like it. Um uh, what's that? Oh, interesting. That'd be an interesting sp spectacle to behold. Shouldn't take long to get there, surely. Three jumps, look at that. So I hope you're learning a little bit about um, using the galactic map and system names. I'd be interested to know uh, if anyone's watching this knew how to uh, manipulate the system names to find the interesting systems. I mean, I think it's fairly common knowledge, but you never know, do you? You think, you say, didn't you know that? And they're like, no, no one told me that, and I've been playing for like 10 years. It's like, oh, okay, I thought it was common knowledge, so you never want to assume. 
but basically that's just manipulating the system names to uh, find interesting systems. I don't really do it that often, um, but I tend to like to eyeball the galaxy map and look for giant stars that way, but here's another way of doing it. And if you're looking for uh, planetary nebula and stuff, then it's probably a better way of doing it is by using the, uh, well, what you just saw basically, me manipulating the system names to find what you're after. I mean, but I hope we got uh, what? It's taking me to another neutron star, and I've got hardly any fuel left. That's a bit worrying. Okay, well, where I am in the galaxy right now, it's so densely populated. I'm not concerned about running out of fuel because there'll be plenty of stars that I can jump to to get some fuel. He says hoping. I've never had to call the fuel rats yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I'm concerned. What's going on here? <laughs> so it wants me to do another 261 light year jump and I've got... Uh, let's just hope this star that is in this system is scoopable. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have to do a little detour. Come on. Ninety-four thousand. Oh, it's a G class. All right, so I can get fuel from that star. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I can get fuel from that star. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll supercharge my drive. find a neutron back oh come on this is why I don't like the anaconda for exploring and when you're in super cruise it's so slow and I have to say the phantom is definitely the next best for me and it would be the first choice if it wasn't for the fact that I like to do my extreme exploring which requires maximum jump range So at the moment, you see, I've got um, 229 light years. How far does it want me to go? 261. Uh, see, that doesn't make sense, does it? There's another example of the star cube. It's just how the uh, the forge works. Right, so we need to go and grab some fuel off for this star, which is great timing because um, I do just need to um, go and pick myself up a oh, little aperitif. So um, it won't take us that long to get there, don't worry, it really won't be that long. Uh, one hour and four minutes, it'll be more like uh, 15 minutes and it avoids uh, me having to break the stream. Um, so I'm just going to grab an aperitif and I'll be right back and if you've got any questions for me or want me to talk about anything uh, regarding to Elite Dangerous um, ask now and we can have a little chat whilst we get some fuel
And we're back in the room. That's the trouble when you fly an anaconda. Um, the bathrooms are so far away. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, what questions have we got? What hot ass do you use? Okay, well I'm using a Sagtech X52 and I've had that for it must be about four years and it's still going strong and I've not had to repair it in any way shape or form um, so I can quite happily recommend it when you're on a tight budget So I scoop some fuel from this star, make our next jump. We have got just the one jump to go, and it is the biggest sector. Well, uh, second biggest sector in the system. It's going to be a white dwarf as well. You've got the X-52 as a backup. Nine years. Wow. X-56. And uh, so what does the X-56 do that the uh, X-52 doesn't? I mean, it is a bit squeaky, I guess. If I'm being honest. But, um, it does the job. some fuel more buttons on the throttle oh, okay and what's this got um, yeah it's got a fair number of buttons on this um, it's always handy to have more buttons of course Let's go to our destination. Here we go then. I believe this one's got a dwarf in it. Oh, it's a wolf ray. Right oh, this would be interesting. Wolf ray right tends to quite often have uh, planetary nebulae around them as well. Obviously, this one doesn't, but. I think the X-52 is the most reliable. Mm. Well, I'm, I must say I'm, I'm really happy with uh, my purchase. Now, hopefully this has got some more bodies in this system. Oh, come on. Just the one star. And 78 solar masses. That's why it's a big system. But unfortunately, it's the only mass <laughs> in the system, and we won't get fuel from it either. Okay, let's uh, let's go to manual mode and try and find something worth looking at. Uh, uh, let's go for a black hole. Uh, an easy way to find black holes as well is if you put the the lightest part of the galaxy in the view that you're looking for black holes are so much easier to find uh, I'll just select that one anyway because we'll go there but as I scroll up look at that, look at all the stars it's just amazing and uh, I can tell you now that, um, the latest update on how much of the galaxy has been explored so far there's another black hole there as you can see oh. right there um, well, that's an interesting system as well. But anyway, we'll go for the one we just found. Um, I think we've explored 0.08% of 
0.08% of the galaxy so far since the game's been going. And uh, I think it'll take about another 42,000 years to uh, explore the galaxy. And map every system. Or just go to every system. So it's not a game that you complete or can complete. You've had three X55s break. Oh, and an X56. So the 55 and 56 have broken on you. <clears throat> but you've still got the 56. Uh, sorry, the 52. Four bodies. What have we got? Come on, let's have a landable. That looks like it's got rings on it. Maybe not. Oh, that's an icy body. It's done. Let's go back there a minute. There's one I missed. Really want to get onto a planetary surface now and show you a little bit of what I intended to show you. But icy bodies aren't the best place to find volcanism. Because volcanism. Look at the. Uh, ooh, look at that. Nice. Um, icy worlds because they're so cold means that there's probably not a lot going on in terms of um, volcanism because they're cold i um, got a landable let's just see but see no volcanism because it's icy uh, what you want is a, a planet that's going through a lot of turbulence or gravitational forces and that produces heat within the planet that then causes volcanism. So one thing you can say about Elite is that it is quite accurate in terms of, um, you know, real physics. Let's oh, see, see, come on, it's probably something nice. See. Over here, that's going to be a neutron star, no doubt. I oh, know it's a dwarf. D, obviously, the higher the letter goes, the, the more mass in the system. D, let's try that. Uh, yeah, actually, that's uh, quite. That's a really low mass A class star. Um, I know that because it's V1, which is a, a size six, which is slightly smaller than the main sequence stars uh, but however it's got a, a big mass indicator so there should be a lot going on in this system let's go and have a look and I've still not done any materials yet I'm fairly confident that this system will have what we're looking for, um, as long as there's landables. <laughs> 21 bodies, there you go. So if you didn't know about the uh, system naming convention, now you do. Let's just get away from the star a bit further and see what we can find. Interested in asteroid clusters, that's for sure. We got here, that's an asteroid cluster, right? That's those out of the way. And another set there. Oh, that's wow. That's weird. Hmm. 
Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Close orbiting gas giants with rings. There's one. Let's get his moons as well. There's plenty more there. Where are they? That one. And that one. Right, uh, some of those are quite close to the main um, gas giants, so they should have volcanism uh, because they are so close. Is that the other gas giant? Yeah. That's got rings as well. There we go. Lovely. And if that's got a close orbiting moon as well, we should definitely be having some volcanism to go and have a look at. Still, some more stuff over here. Is that area done? Got all the stars. Bonkers. Another ringed gas giant. Oh, this is the. There's going to be a lot. That's like a snake almost of uh, moons there. That's going to be ringed and it's going to have volcanism for sure. I'll bet five British pounds that these moons have volcanism. Just quickly scanning them. Two more to go. One more gas giant. Oh, is it going to be behind the star? Hmm. My spidey senses tell me not. So, where would it be? Oh, there it is over there. Uh, no rings on this one. It's got one more. Oh, and it's behind the star. It's there. Right, let's just move forwards a bit. While we do that, we'll have a look at the system map. Let's see what we're looking at. Uh, 2.9 days. 3.2. Hmm, not very close. Let's that sack. Let's grab the last one. There she blows. Okay, let's see if we've got somewhere to land and uh, take a look. Seventy light seconds, so it's not that close. So, no volcanism, no volcanism, no volcanism, no volcanism. That, yeah, that's got volcanism. Silk at vapor of geezers. No volcanism, no volcanism. Da, 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 none. Right, so this is the one to go for then. Uh, orbital period is so there's a lot of tidal forces going on and that's why that one has volcanism All right let's go and show you how to find the maps you want excellent Stacy. so the X-52 is uh, range champion in terms of not breaking I have uh, greased mine up a couple of times um, to stop it squeaking but apart from that no it's still going strong Two 
too many stars. <laughs> oh yeah! X-52 reigns supreme. Use the gas giant to slow me down. Uh, ricochet round. There we go then. Let's get on the planet's surface and see what we can find. Oh, it's actually a moon. I'm going to have to change the video title, I think. Randomly um, looking for stuff close to the core of the galaxy. I think it's probably a better uh, description. Craters on that. Right, okay, here we go then. Uh, how many? Two probes, wow. Look at the sun. Oh, we got to go and have a look at that, right? I don't know if you can see that, but there's a massive crater right there. I'm guessing it'll probably just want two probes anyway, but we might get away with one. We'll try it. But right there, right where. <clears throat> look, there's a massive deep crater. That's going to be quite a stunning place to look at. 100% with one probe. Right. Uh, don't want to be looking down there. Let's get out of that mode. Look at that crater there. That is amazing. Right. Um, let's see what we've got. Do we have any biological as well? So all geological. All geological. Right, let's. Uh, is there anything near that crater? That's a shame. Um, go for that. that is amazing. Whoa, look at that mountain over there. It's huge. Look at that. Oh, no, that's not near that crater. That crater is. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Pity there's no geological features there. Wow, look at that. That is immense. Right, and there's a massive mountain. Here. Look at that. That mountain range. How far is that off the surface? That's <laughs> massive. Have I ever found a ringed earth -like world on my travels? Yes, I have, and I mapped it and put my name on it. Ultra rare find, has to be said. Oh, no, we don't want to go into... Uh, I forgot about that planet sat there. Right, um, I'm just looking for an inter interesting place to land. This place has got a lot of interesting geological uh, things going on. Yeah, new te textures are looking great, aren't they? Uh, oh, that one's on the edge of a crater. Can maybe go and have a look at that one. Well, maybe not that close to a crater. These mountain ranges on this uh, planet are quite intense. Let's have a look at this one. These mountains are, uh, oh, they're 
Yeah, that one. I like that one. It's right next to that mountain range. Let's go for that. That should make for good viewing. We should still be able to see that mountain if we circle around. There we go, then we're going for this. Let's see what we find. Talking of um, ringed earth lights though, do you know you can get ringed neutron stars? Uh, there's something to uh, behold. And because they're a neutron star and spinning so fast, the, uh, the ring and uh, the rocks within that ring spin around so fast it's crazy uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to land here in an anaconda um, it's such a big ship looking at this crater I didn't realize this feature was inside the crater might be difficult to find a landing spot but we'll give it a go what's the gravity uh, 0.16, okay, we ain't got to worry about that too much, as long as we're sensible. Into the crater. How fast are we going? Let's come off the throttle. See, it said silicate vapour geysers, but I've got a really strong feeling that these are going to be firm holes and not geezers but it doesn't matter if we can just, oh wow, this is going to be really difficult to find a landing place, it's how bumpy it is uh, let's try and find a smooth bit of land over here somewhere nice textures though right hope we can find somewhere back here oh, there we go oh, forwards a bit that'll do come on hmm. that's why we have shields folks <laughs> there we go well, that's not it's not a bad view is it let's get out in the SRV And now we can actually talk about why we come here. Or what this video was meant to be about in the first place. Mm. A little bit over enthusiasm. Oh wow. That moon look that moon looks cool too, isn't it? Oh, that's a screenshot opportunity, surely. Let's see. So there she is, my exploration ship. Community logo. SRV. Point of interest. Bright star. And a huge moon. Very close by. I'm actually sat in a crater. So we're not going to see those mountains after all. Um, anyway, here we are. Let's... Uh, I hate it when it does that. Anyway. Very nice. Very pretty. Right, so I suppose... I can't help but enjoy the scenery. I do love the scenery. If only we could ever actually do this in real life would be amazing, wouldn't it? I'd do it and not get paid, to be honest. Um... So what we'll do is we'll go and explain how to find what resources you want. Yes, that's a, yeah, it does look stunning, doesn't it? That's just an amazing view, really. Uh, 
Wait a minute, this RV. Wow. Go for a little drive, look. Woohoo! That's a nice view, isn't it, actually? Little backflip of joy. There we go. Right, anyway, this is <laughs> enough of that. Uh, oh, uh, look at that, we're all frozen up. That's because I've got on uh, minimum. That's how I keep... That's because... That's my setup from the planet of death. That's why we have a frozen cockpit right now. Uh, I was running as cold as possible because we were orbiting a white dwarf. Alright, let's switch on all our stuff. Put a shield generator on. Sensors. Gonna need that wave scanner. Don't really need that to be honest. I'll turn that off. Get the power cargo hatch. Daily stuff I can go on. There we go. <coughs> and look at that, we have now defrosted because we're generating a lot more heat with all this stuff running. Alright, let's change our scan range to maximum. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing into the microphone. Max of past systems. Right, um, so what we're looking for, first of all, on our radar, you will see in the middle there, there are two white dots. Now, we are in a system that has, um, well, it should be silicate vapor geezers, but there's a bit of an issue with the game where it tends to give you firm hauls instead. Uh, let's go and prove that. And we'll scan one. Well, there's not a lot of gravity at all here. Let's find one. That'll do. Right, and then switch to our analysis analysis mode. <coughs> Excuse me. Scan it again just to prove what it is. Silica vapor gas vent. That's not a geezer, is it? Anyway. Uh, we won't worry about that right now. The, the thing that we came here for anyway was resources. Um, and these white dots that you can see on my radar are all resources. And they grow, for want of a better word, off of these um, points of interest. And you can see that there's one there. If I select it, that's a crystalline cluster. That's it. However you pronounce that. Pisces cobble. Anyway, um, let's just take Stats' comment for a second before we do any more. Do you have any OCD things that you have that you have to do in the game? For example, when I'm exploring, I always have to finish a run on a blue star and log out. <laughs> do you know what I tend to do? Um, I honk and then honk again and then honk again <laughs> so it's permanently even if I've been to a system before I still honk it's like OCD well oh and 50,000 credits on the codex woohoo I'm going to be rich very soon okay um, so why are we here what do we want to do the first thing we want to do is the whole point of this video to start with although it's not turned out to be but we'll better cover some of it anyway is um, it was about finding resources that you want so on this planet here it's landable it has um, silica vapor geysers you can do the same with um, biological points of interest as well but we'll, we'll stick with geological for the moment now on this planet these are the materials that you can get. The most rarest always being at the bottom with the lowest percent. The most common at the top with the highest percent. And things in between. Now, the way that you can find exactly the resources that you want is by looking at 
the planet materials in this view. Now arsenic's always one to have as an explorer, it's used a lot. And it doesn't it's not the most rare, it kind of sits in the middle. Now these resources relate to the types of things that grow on points of interest like silica vapor geysers. Um, and the rarer the growth, the rarer the resource that you get when you shoot it. So let's just talk about those resources. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if we go back into the main view and we go into our contacts, you can see uh, three different contract contacts at the moment. You can see crystalline cluster, Pisces cobble, and crystalline fragments. Now, those types of things that we can shoot, and what you'll see in a minute, when we shoot them, they turn into resources. But you get a different type of resource depending on the rarity of those types of um, growths that you see around uh, these points of interest. So the most common growth is Pisces cobble. So if I wanted something from the most common areas of this planet, and we'll just prove it in a moment, uh, go back to the details. So if I shoot Pius Cobble, however you pronounce it, I will either get sulfur, iron, maybe carbon, if I'm lucky. Let's see what we get. Uh, and that's what I've got highlighted right now. Oh dear. Control issue. <laughs> right, we also need to um, switch to weapons. And the dual repeater. Uh, there it is there. And if you ever notice the SRV targeting system always sits lower than your target, it's really frustrating. There is a way to get around that, is that you just use your boosters. Sometimes. And set your systems up correctly. And you can like jump over and get them, but that didn't go according to plan that time. Oh, come on. Got it. Right. Nickel. Okay, let's go back to the planetary map. Nickel. Is that in the top three? Okay, top four. So that's extremely rare to get that, actually. So, on the most common type of growth, you get the first four in this particular place. Uh, that's not always the case. You get Sometimes you get less resources, therefore, uh, you know, you work it out, basically. So, one, two, three, four. Nickel. Okay. Let's pick that up with the cargo scoop. Okay, so that's the most common growth that you'll get in one of these areas. What else have we got on our map? Crystalline cluster and crystalline fragments. Okay. Next in line is crystalline fragments. So the most common is pious cobble. Next is crystalline fragments. And so let's see what we get from those. Now it will be some point, it will either be nickel, which is uh, the most likely to happen because it's in the middle there, or it will be one of the ones, uh, other resources just below nickel in terms of common MFC. Ever since located in an awkward position today for some reason oh zinc okay right let's go and grab the zinc and see where that sits oh my word there's not much gravity here is there where's it gone oh, there it is all right let's go back to the sim system map have a look at the planet zinc let's see where does that sit zinc sits so we've got nickel, 
one two three zinc so we're getting pretty much top quality resources from these at the moment which is great because um, it could have been chromium it could have been uh, phosphorus but we got zinc so that's good zinc's the one we're after now if things go according to plan then if we go for the next rarest which is crystalline cluster maybe we'll get arsenic let's see We get mercury, okay. Well, let's just see where that sits in the whole scheme of things. I tell you what, it's been a while since I've been on a planet with hardly any gravity. This has got hardly any at all. Okay, mercury. So let's see where that sits. I'm guessing it's going to be one of the most rare of that category as well. Was it Mercury we picked up then? <laughs> Mercury! Wow, this planet's really delivering on the most rarest because we haven't got to the most rarest type of growth yet. Because the rarest type of growth um, is needle crystals. Interesting. Okay. So let's go and find some more <coughs> growths. We get quite a few white dots on my radar, so we get a good selection. All crystalline fragments, okay. There we go, we're getting a good selection now. Okay, loads to choose from here. Nice view too, by the way. Uh, needle crystals. Okay, so needle crystals are the most rarest. And needle crystals will always, always drop the rarest material on the planet that you're on. So, I know we already got Mercury. Uh, that was just real luck because this planet's being really generous in terms of giving out its best quality um, resources for each sort of like category of growth so I'm going to go and, go out on a limb and guarantee that we get mercury out of this <laughs> we should do I bet it does something really weird now give me the next next one up uh, right so what do we want, we want uh, needle crystals okay now the reason why I always go for the rarest, whenever I land on the planet, even if I don't want um, <clears throat> that particular resource that I know it's going to give out, uh, which is the rarest, which are worth a lot in the game because you just go to a material trader. Um, oh come on, seriously. What's this game doing to me today? <laughs> Ruth, what? Hang on. Am I? That is a rare. Really? It's given me the the worst category <laughs> from the rarest uh, of objects. That's hilarious. I told you it was being funny. Um, so yeah, interesting that. But it uh, would normally <laughs> give me the most rarest. Um, so in order of what you might discover, uh, needle crystals. I mean that's hilarious. Needle crystals is the uh, rarest growth, and it should give you the rarest material. But this planet is being really weird and giving up best resources. Um, on lower growth uh, classes. We need collect Olympics on our SRVs, we do. But you can sort of like boost into what what you want to collect as well. 
Which can be fun. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's giving me lesser grade. Uh, so anyway, needle crystals should give you the uh, highest rating, but now it's being random and therefore giving me cluster. Let's go for cluster again and let's see if we get, uh, what was it? Was it mercury was the uh, rarest? Quick look, can't remember. Uh, oh yeah, let's see if we get mercury from the uh, crystalline cluster then. W which will make this planet a bit back to front. But as a rule of thumb, trust me when I tell you that it's the uh, needle crystals give you the rarest resource of the planet. It's going to give me mercury in it. Tin. <laughs> What's going on this planet? It's hilarious. Right, tin I think is the second most rarest, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, uh, funny. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. So if you want common resources, then obviously um, picking up things like the pyres, cobble and stuff like that will give you those. Uh, and then move on from there. Clusters. Clusters and needles are the ones for your more rarer. Um, and on this planet, it's proving to be clusters that are, are saving the day. If, if I was actually after those sort of resources. Mercury, look. <laughs> See? And you can collect in midair. <laughs> Just for the record. Right. Uh, more needle crystals. See, they should always be mercury. But I'm guessing it's going to be maybe arsenic. Look at that. Typically, I haven't had any arsenic, which is what all explorers want to find is arsenic. Now, the same applies to this technique with biological as well. Is this <laughs> being back to front today? Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. Um, crystalline fragments will give me something mid range. Maybe I'll get arsenic. You never know. I was determined that time. Arsenic as well. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. There we go. Ding dong, I see a dong. It's Yamix. <laughs> Hi Yamix, how you doing? Uh, I was watching your live stream earlier, mate. Enjoyed it. Did you finally get the Thargoids? <laughs> oh, it's the Yamix. Is it the same Yamix or is it not? I don't know. Well, if it is, anyway, I enjoyed it. There's not p many people I watch, but I do like to watch uh, Yamix on uh, Elite Dangerous. Uh, just love the way he's so frank. Right, anyway, enough of this shena shenanigans. Let's go and find somewhere else interesting to go. Okay, so what would anyone like me to do right now? Don't say just explode my ship. Um, but... Uh, where would you like to go? What would you like to see? Anything of interest? Black hole, neutron star, dwarf. You name it, we'll go there. You can control the stream from here. All the power. So let me know. Any old chat.
So, uh, where would you like me to go? Uh, well, popped in to say hi, right back to stuff. Right back to stuff I did. Well, it's a pleasure to have you at Yamix. I am honoured. And uh, more how to be an asshole videos, please. Because uh, uh, I'm pretty much one of those myself. Uh, although I just... <laughs> So, where are we going? Any cool nebulas near? Okay, yeah, I wanted to find some of those uh, stats. See, let's go and have a look at the old galaxy map and see what's on offer. Um, mm. Oh, there's too many stars. Oh, I hate being near the core. Oh, that one's a bit too far away. Why am I getting weird frame rate drops as well? Do I need a new graphics card again? I mean, I can't possibly do this. VR rated and everything. Um, mind you, nothing's really far when you listen far into the core because neutron star boosting just gets you anywhere really rapidly. What's that there? What is that dot? What is it? Oh, it's a nebula base really far away. Um, okay, 10,000 light years is going to take me an hour. We're not, we don't want to spend an hour going all the way over there, do we? What, but is, there must be nebula near the galactic core. Come on. What, a planetary nebula? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, Nine thousand light years. Come on. Six thousand light years. That's half an hour's travel. Oh, what is it doing now? I hate it when it does that. Do you want to sit sit around for half an hour while I travel six thousand light years? Probably not. Come on, there must be a nebula somewhere nearer. And of course, if you know a nebula near where I am right now, then please feel free to put the link in below. Hey Kermit, a ringed neutron. Uh, a ringed neutron. Uh, how close is the r closest ring neutron? Uh, I thought Adam says it must be on my other account. Ring neutron. Neutron ringed? Can't remember what I called it. Unexplored. Oh, those are useful blooming bookmarks, aren't they? <laughs> Put those in the bin. Um, Neutron twenty. Uh, I'm gonna have to refer to my ringed neutron database. Uh, okay, so to do that, we need to. My my other account's definitely got ring neutrons as bookmarks. Deaf planets. Thargoids. Right. You want a ring neutron? You ask for a ring neutron. We'll go to a ring neutron. Just bear with me one moment and I'll just load up my uh, ring neutron places to go and see which one's closest. Uh, mm -mm. Let's see. So the best looking one that I have, because it's got better lighting, uh, it's on my other account, but I see how far away this is. Uh, where are we going? Oh, this looks far. This looks really far. Oh, 8,000. 8,000. Oh, well, let's just see how long that'll take. Um... I'm sure there's a better looking one. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, why is that taking so long to calculate? What's it doing? One, two, three, four, five black holes. There is a neutron star in there as well, I know there is. Dude. Why is it taking so long? <laughs> right, uh how many is that? Thirty eight jumps, that's like half an hour. Told you it'd be half an hour. Let's see if the other one's closer. Uh <laughs> oh my word, that's even further. Okay, um... Alright, half an hour. Just going to go full tilt then, okay? You asked for it, but you'll have to talk to me all the way because I was going to get really boring. <laughs> right. Ring Neutron Star, everybody. Half an hour. We need to think about something to talk about for half an hour now. And Kermit, it's all your fault. Oh, get on with it. Kermit, I take it you've got half an hour, right? Because if you disappear before I get to the ring station... <laughs> We're going to have to have words. Right. Let's see. Of course, the destination I want is behind the planet. It's always handy, isn't it? <sighs> Let's wait for the gravitational wells to fight with my ship on every direction I try to point. Well, I've just mentioned half an hour trip and there's still people watching, so that's amazing. <laughs> I won't stop to scan, I'll, I'll just crack on and get to a ringed neutron star for you. said did I say here uh, sorry did I say near here if my connection allows ring neutron if all oh, right well oh are you saying you're coming you saying that you're a ring neutron right now is that what you're saying I mean I've got a pretty funky exploration ship, it can get places quite quickly, whereabouts are you? If you are indeed suggesting that you're uh, at a ring neutron already. I will require a system name <coughs> to speed up the process, otherwise it could take some time. Look at my fuel level again, and I'm off to another neutron star. I need to pay more attention. Stas, <laughs> you're still here. <laughs> Excellent. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're crazy. Uh, are we in combat mode? Why are we in combat mode? Yes, I know the main fuel tank's low. Oh my god, 301 light years when I've only got that much fuel. That's not going to work, is it? Uh. Warning. Frame shift drive 
Is it me just not paying attention, but sh I shouldn't be in this situation when I've got no fuel? Yeah, brilliant. Supercharged, still can't get there. Why is it doing to me? How far away is the other star? Oh, 1,000 light seconds. Let's go and grab some fuel off that. Oh, you'll stick with the video. Okay, right. Okay, how many jumps have we got to do? 36, right. Half an hour from when I scoot from this star. Um, I'm going to go full tilt, which means I won't be scanning... Uh, I'll just be honking and moving on. Known as honking on. It's like schoolboy error. And making sure I didn't have enough fuel to start the uh, journey. But we'll soon fix that. With my huge fuel scoop. Kermit, you're 7,500 light years from Colonia, meandering there in a 16.5 light year sidey. 16.5? Why so low? I happen to have an unengineered sidewinder that does 21 light years, I think, in my other account. Uh, which I am going to engineer up to a maximum. I have no far how, I have no idea how much distance you can get out of a sidewinder, but 16.5 light years. What, are you carrying rare goods as well? <laughs> uh. Alright, let's so grab some fuel off this star and then we'll crack on. Feeling hot, hot, hot. That'll do. Let's get going. Ah, uh, temperature, smudge picture. Where are we going? Oh dear. All these warnings. Hey Jules, I use Spanish to get me to faraway places. Can cut the time in half. Hang on here. What's this? You know something I don't. What? You use Spanish? Well, there's no I. That's Spanish. Come on, what's the secret then, Jules? Spanish half the time. I'm really intrigued. Tell me about Spanish. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Jules. What's what's Spanish? You on about the neutron highway or something? Um <coughs> Ah, look at the blooming sky map. On this side, you see thousands and thousands and thousands of stars. On the other side, uh, you'll see that there's no stars at all. Why? Please fix it. Come on. Please charge. Thank you. It's a website. Yes. 
Oh, Spanish. We'll give you a series of neutron stars to follow. Ah, so it is the new neutron superhighway. But isn't that um Oh what you can plot in your starting point and end point? If you can plot your start point and end point, then yeah I can see that could have some uses. Um the the mapping system is pretty good. Uh from the galaxy map, I think. Doesn't do too bad, but yeah. The super highway, if you know which points you want to go to. Ah, uh, but then don't start me, because now I'm going to start thinking about how many bookmarks we get. Not enough, basically. Which really gets on my nerves. Only one hen. Okay. So what's the end point? Is that to, um... Like Sagittarius A or something. But yeah, bookmarks, come on. We need more box bookmarks, right? And we need to be able to categorize them. It's like, I want to be able to make like five categories of bookmarks. And then I want to be able to have as, you know, at least a hundred bookmarks per category. I mean, I know we, we've gone past the point where we just used to buy a sidewinder and leave it in a station, but when you're exploring, you can't buy a sidewinder and just leave it as a bookmark somewhere. Ugh, blimey. This is tedious in an anaconda. Charge! Check the neutrons along the way. Uh, it, it's pretty damn obvious when you find one that's uh, ringed. Um, I mean, if you want to see, uh, you can kind of like go into the system map and let's go to Ori. A hey, zoom in. Yada yada yada. Yep. Definitely no rings. But no, I will keep an eye out. They're really super rare anyway. It's normally a H-class system. Uh, you know, when I was speaking before about the uh, the system names. Uh, it needs to be something blah, 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 H. Um, to find a ring neutron. Quite normally. Uh, and the system that I'm going to... I believe is one of those very systems. <laughs> Stats, so yeah, I already mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, before uh, bookmarks, we use sidewinders. Which is great when you're messing about in the bubble. That tiny little bubble where all, all the players play, obviously. And then say, oh, when exploring. And I went 400 light years, 400 light years, and every system already had people's names on it. It's like, seriously, 400 light years? <laughs> I, I'm doing 301 light years in one jump. What are you about? That's not exploring. 400 light years, you haven't even opened the back door to get in the garden. Sort it out. That's what I'd say, sort it out. Get out there and explore. Here's another 301 light year jump, look. Eesh. How are we doing? Oh my word, don't look, don't look. There's more jumps to come yet. Um, just so you know that ringed neutron stars are extremely rare. Um... I think I only know. I think there's only four that I know of. I mean, I'm sure there's more, and someone's probably got a secret spreadsheet somewhere with even more on. But um, 
I only know of four ringed neutrons, so they really are quite rare. And the ones that are in black hole systems, they're not always illuminated because obviously they're in a black hole system, which kind of spoils the view. Oh my god, this feels like it's taking forever. Excuse me. It's all Kermit's fault. Blame Kermit for watching this right now. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Neutron star after neutron star. Uh, two bodies. You know, I've always wondered though, with the new uh, stellar phenomenon, it, when it says system scan complete, I don't think it will include those, would it? So you could actually potentially miss out on stuff. That's the first time I went to Sag A in a A. Is that Anaconda or Adder or Asp Explorer? <laughs> What's the A stamp Yeah, come it. Um, yeah, stars are quite rare to have rings round. Um, but yeah, the dwarfs can quite often have those. So if you find ring stars, I mean, if you want to go to crazy systems, um, I will. Why did I do that? I don't want that. Um, yeah, crazy systems. I do want to go back to uh, NGC. Can't remember where it's what it's called now. Um, something like seven two two or something. Absolutely bonkers system. Uh, and I went there early on in the game when I first got it, and I went there in a hauler explorer. Um, and it's an amazing system. And the reason I'm thinking about that right now is because earlier I did a stream in my other account, and there was this uh, blob in the sky, and it was that very uh, nebula. But it's the most bonkler, uh, bonkers nebula that you could ever go to. Uh, I'll show you where it is. It's over here. Um, zoom in a little bit and I'll find it eventually. Is that it there? There, this one. If you've not been anywhere uh, for crazy system, this is a place to come to. This place is bonkers. Um, so go to the NGC yeah, 7822 sector. Go there. It's all bonkers. I'll just look at one system map for you and show you how bonkers it is. Uh, not in that view. Yeah. We're, we're talking bonkers systems. Get a lot of this going on. So totally go in there uh, and check out that system. Right. Anyway. Kermit, except for Brown Dwarf Serving, yeah. They are rare. Stats seat. Full combat fitted ASP. <laughs> 22 light year range. He went combat ready to Sagittarius A. Okay. And did you find anything to shoot at? <laughs> That's a major feat, though. I mean, you must have visited a lot of systems to get there, right? I mean, I did that all that debate about should you take a weapon when you go exploring. Uh, my Asp Explorer that I took out the very first time, it didn't have any shields, no weapons. It was stripped down to the bare bone. I think I, I, there's a video um, of it on my channel somewhere. It's like the ultimate 
Hall of Explorer or something. And basically, it was just a, a hull with a, ma a maximum jump drive. And I think it had a range of like 30 light years. Of course, since, thing, since then, things have got really crazy because we have uh, engineering and Guardian frame shift drive boosters. 43 bodies. Hmm. Let's have a look while we're getting fuel. Anything I want to look at? Uh, no. 40, 43 bodies and nothing that really floats my boat. <laughs> Kermit. Noted for future reference. <laughs> Starts a year, Commander Metis. The Guardian of Saj was waiting. I'll tell you what, talking of which, because um, I'm. I don't care if I get blown up by anything or any anyone. I really don't. Um, I'm a, probably a ganker's worst wet dream. But um, <clears throat> I did go all the way out early on in the game. I can't remember what I was flying. I think it might have been an Asp Explorer actually. And I went all the way out um, on a quick dash out to um, the Bubble Med Nebula. To go and meet another commander because I don't really meet that many commanders in space really um, but I thought oh yeah we'll go out there and meet and um, we met on this it was just like a planetary ring so we was in the asteroid belt of the ring and I was just messing about spinning around and obviously it appeared on my uh, screen and we just went flying towards each other you know waggling our wings and all that stuff um, everything was great, and then um, I clipped his, I clipped his ship with mine. His ship was bigger, and I exploded. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I did laugh. Not a shot fired as well. But it was funny. There's a video on YouTube of it somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, all that way, probably something like seven thousand light years, and. Uh, got there, went to go and say hi, clipped his ship doing a silly manoeuvre and uh, I exploded and ended up back where I started. Hey, Salamander Eyes. Oh, look, another generic streamer. There's nothing generic about me, mate. You have no idea. <laughs> no idea at all. Which means you're new to the channel, so welcome. Generic streamer. Uh, that didn't charge, did it? Hey, do you mean generic? Do you mean, like... I don't know what you mean actually, generic. Anyway, I'm certainly not generic, uh, I'm quite unique. Stats here, I had no idea about weight and class D back then. Alright, oh, so we like running A class stuff. And when I get to Sad J, if anyone tries anything, I'll be able to blow them up in my Asp Explorer, right? Self-appointed queen. It's Sajay. I think it's crazy though. I mean, the whole PB ganking thing and all that stuff. At the end of the day, it's just pointless. I mean, okay, so I could quite easily go back to um, the bubble grab any ship, any large class ship, you know, shield tank, armor tank, whatever. 
outload it, engineer it to the hilt for defense and um, offensive weaponry, max it right out, squeak it past to the very limit. And I'm sure I've got an old school um, shield as well, which um, is outperforms any of the, uh, the shields that you can get now. And then once I've done that, and I'll probably have a jump range of about, I don't know, depends on which ship, somewhere in the region about 50 light years. Um, but even if it was only, you know, if it was fully armoured, like, to the hilt, depending on which build you went for, whether it be shield or armour, um, you still have a jump range of about 30 light years. You go all the way to South J, sat there, in a PvP uh, ship, knowing full well that no one else is going to turn up to such a in a ship designed purely for PvP, and you just annihilate everything in sight because most of the people that fly to such a are flying in paper thin pla uh, paper thin ships. And I don't I don't get the buzz from that at all. Do you know I think it would be more of a challenge. Yeah, if I was into the PvP stuff, I'd build a paper thin explorer but fill it full of weapons. But paper thin, I wouldn't have, like, go stupid on shield tank or armor tank and sit here at SRJ and say, Look, it's paper thin, let's go for it. But no, they sit there, it's like, Well, yeah, well, you know, I've taken down many a fucking battleship. In my time, in my super fed this, that, or flipping anaconda, that. And I've come all the way out to Sajay. Took me, took me three weeks to get here. But um, I've got the hardest ship at Sajay, and I'm going to shoot you. Well done. <laughs> oh, wasted time. Yes, yeah, that's the other feeling. It would be class A all the way. But that's just human nature, right? Which module can I get? Well, A's the best, so I'll just fit that. <laughs> Without really thinking any more about it. What do I want? A power plant, A shields, A everything. Give me A! But then, to be fair, back in the day, there was like, oh yeah, I've got my... I've managed to make my, my first A-rated anaconda. So, well, that must be the best thing, because it's A-rated. Uh, how times have changed. A isn't always the be all and end all. Warning. Frame shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Oh my word, twenty two, seriously. We need really to get a crack on here. Or is time just going slow for me, I don't know. For those that have just joined the stream, just to let you know, we're making our way to a ringed neutron star, something that's really quite rare and elite dangerous. And uh, if you're wondering why we're doing that, then. Um, You can ask Kermit Butler, because uh, it was his idea. <laughs> Kermit's a regular viewer, which I appreciate. And uh, so I've been challenged to go and find a, a ringed neutron star. So that's what we're going to do. They're really rare. So hopefully you'll appreciate. Kermit Butler's choice of locations. And 
Kurt, my sidey is a mutt in racing, in ratings. No engineering, just seeing if I do it. Oh yeah, you will be able to do it. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. Someone went to, uh, we'll try to get the Beagle Point in a sidewinder that was unengineered. Something like cowboy something or other. Um, seriously, only two bodies. Yeah, it certainly is. But you should be able to get 20 light years at least out of a sidewinder that's not engineered. And on my other account, I'm sure I've got at least one of the sidewinders like that. But I am going to fully engineer a sidewinder. I'm even thinking about putting a Guardian frameshift drive booster on it. <laughs> and obviously, it won't have any shields or scanners or anything. But um, just, just for the hell of it. So Kermit, you saying you've not seen? You must have seen a ringed neutron star, right? I guess. Uh, nothing of interest. Hands up, who's watching this stream right now that's seen a ringed neutron star? Let's set a baseline. Oh dear. I need to repair my ship now as well. So yeah, if you've seen a seen a ringed yourself, this is. If you've seen a ringed neutron star, let me know. And if you haven't, let me know. Uh, we're on seventy nine percent. So that um, frame shift drive malfunction will really get on my nerves. So I'm going to have to repair it. Sorry. Um, how far we got to go? Oh, why word? Really? Uh, notice the system name though, AA hyphen A and then H. Those are the system coordinates you need to go for for each system if you want to find those crazy ones. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the opportunity right now because I will get annoyed by uh, frame shift drive failure. I'm just going to repair my frame shift drive before we carry on our journey. And then we'll take a good look at a ringed neutron star, and that's where I'll end the stream. I'll probably have to rename it. Uh, right, what are we doing? Uh, do we need repairing pits. Uh, yep, we want that switched on. And we want frame shift drive set to repair. There we go. Right. Um, so, whilst my ship repairs itself, bear with me for five minutes, uh, and I will be back. Oh, and then we'll go and look at a ring neutron star. Enjoy. Be right back.
Okay, I'm back and I'm feeling refreshed. So let's crack on to a ringed neutron star. Oh, of course, I need to turn my frame shift drive back on. As soon as it says it's ready. We're off. Stream froze. No, it hasn't frozen. I uh, went and had a little refresh myself. There we go then. As quick as we can. Take a big gulp of fuel for this one. There we go. And that's why you fit a big uh, fuel scoop. Never worry about a bit of heat damage. Heat sinks are for babies. So if you play Elite Dangerous, what do you find the most challenging part of it? I know a lot of people um, use docking computers which I wouldn't trust whatsoever. That's it my man, Statsy. Uh, that is if you're a man or woman of course. Um, yeah, heat sinks. What's the point, eh? Uh, the only time I used heat sinks was when I went to the um, planet Death because you kind of needed it, really, to because <laughs> it was a bit crazy. But I mean, you could survive, but it's just a case of having to keep doing repairs, really. Uh, nothing of interest here. Let's carry on. It would be nice if they could fix the uh, star cube thing. Because it does look really wrong when you see a big cube of stars. <laughs> Kermit. Handy having a coffee pot. Yeah. Five inches on one side and then five inches on the other. Yeah. Or you, you could play sitting on the toilet, I guess, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. Probably end up with piles. Oh, let's, let's, let's grab a bit more fuel, actually. <laughs> Kermit lent a dock in 984. Yeah, same as that. <coughs> 
Talking of 1984, isn't it about time we got military lasers? Isn't it about time? I think it's about time we got military lasers. I really do. All these rail guns and flat cannons and... Where are the military lasers? Because that was a laser to have, right? Yeah, cube space is the Borg, and you will be assimilated. And resistance is futile, and all that good stuff. Okay, well I'm going as fast as I can. More, 14 more jumps. 15 minutes. Hopefully it'll be worth it. On the way to a ringed neutron star. I'll tell you what though, the ring does go around the neutron star like really rapid. bodies I don't know what it is since the last update but these uh, jet clones don't seem anywhere near as dangerous in terms of visual appearance Extendable cargo holds, and uh, what was the law behind that? It used some sort of like compression technology or something that gave you more cargo space. <laughs> yeah, miniature lasers. Once you got them, Thargoids didn't stand a chance. Yeah, the star distribution, because um, they did it in sectors, you know, these, these cubes. And each cube had a allocated mass. And it kind of works, but when you get close to the core, because there's so much mass going on, the way it distributes uh, can look well, you know what it looks like. It looks like a cube. Which kind of makes it feel like you're not in our galaxy. Eleven jumps to go, we'll be there. So yeah, I even had a lead on um, the original lead. I had it on the uh, was it the Acorn Electron?
and uh, I'll never forget loading the game via a cassette tape. <laughs> but the great thing about the uh, BBC and Acorn Electron was is that if it didn't read the data properly, you could rewind the tape and and try again. <laughs> uh, and there's probably people watching this going, "What's a cassette tape?" Um, but yeah, I don't forget that. And then you had other systems like the ZX Spectrum, where you you didn't have that idea of rewinding to try again. It was a case of if it didn't work, that was it. <laughs> Start again. And the loading times weren't exactly rapid, were they? Well, it won't be long now, and we'll be looking at a ring neutron star. Grab some fuel and see what's about. Oh. Really? That can't be a gas giant down at that range. Fuel scooping complete. I think that's going to be a water giant. Let's quickly have a look. I like a challenge. Uh, not over there. Warning. Oh, there we go. Not worry about temperature right now. It's ringed, whatever it is. Water giant. Ah, uh, there. See. See. Gah. I love a challenge. I knew it would be a gas giant. Well, water giant, kind of the same thing. But I had a feeling that'd be a water giant. Worth a look, wasn't it? Hey. Eh? All right. Nine jumps to go. So yeah, Commodore 64 and your Mega 500, and you still have it on your Win Windows 95 box. <laughs> yeah, I had a Mega 500, and then I got the uh, the Amiga 1200. Oh yeah, and I expanded it. I think I put like a I got a one gig memory, or was it one meg? Blimey. Um, a big memory expansion in it anyway. I did like the Amiga. Great machine. Really good. I mean, what's going to touch Speedball 2? Let's face it. Speedball 2 is an awesome game. Sensible soccer. Yeah. Guess I'm sure my age really, but... That so your accent sounds familiar. You in the Midlands? Hmm. Well, I'm from all over, really. Uh, from Dan Seth and kind of honorary up north, and spent quite a bit of time in the Midlands. So I've got a real mixture of an accent. It's, I, f well, I think it's quite neutral my accent hard to locate because it's got so many different uh, influences on it
Looks like gonna be right cottony, I can. All right, get the frame shift drive going. Let's go on. Let's get on to the next star, innit? Yeah. And there's Wiltshire in there. Frame shift drive. <laughs> now that sounds funny, doesn't it? Frame shift drive. Hey, stats, you remember Speedball 2 as well, then, right? And sensible Soccer. Ah, uh, those were the days. Never really got into Lemmings, though. I think that was a girls' game. But, um, that's my opinion. Oh, look, too close orbiting stars. I knew I should have picked up more fuel then. Oh, well. Stats, you're near Birmingham. Uh, I'm not the best at doing a Birmingham accent. It's like, hey, yam yams. Baby goo. I spent quite a lot of time near Bristol. Which is kind of like a farmer accent. Farmer, Bristol. So, yeah, I've got a weird accent, really. Must be nearly there by now. Where are we? Five jumps. Five jumps. Five jumps. To the ring neutron star. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Popped out of the jet cone too soon. That's it, so grew up on the ZX81. Oh, yeah. Did that have the uh, the 16k RAM pack expansion? <laughs> Which just. I still struggle to quantify that. 16k expansion. 16k. <laughs> An icon on the desktop of a Windows PC is like five times that. Actually, ten times that. An icon. Yeah. Yeah, those are the days. <clears throat> and crazy things still, that was before the internet! to take a big gulp of fuel this time how far we got three jumps just the three sixteen K ramp pack <laughs> Yeah, those 16k ramp packs weren't made up to be all what they were meant to be, to be honest, because they always used to get loose and overheat. Talking of overheating. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, good old internet. Remember, we used to have to dial up. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Jesus. I was always um, as, as far as ahead as I could be in terms of uh, all that stuff. I had uh, dual ISDN as soon as it was, was, was possible. And the reason I went to the trouble of getting dual ISDN was all about ping. Because I used to play Counter Strike. <laughs> oh, yeah. The very first version of Counter Strike. And back then it was all about your ping. And the best ping you could get was using ISDN. Oh, the days. Yeah, the bobbleheads, right? Oh my god, the bobbleheads alone would be. A bobblehead's probably like an Amiga <laughs> these days. System scan complete. Yeah, Joy SD and I had two phone lines. <clears throat> so uh, I joined them together. Obviously, I completely owned it Counter-Strike. <clears throat> then after Counter-Strike, my, um... I stumbled across Battlefield Vietnam. And I absolutely loved that game. I had a clan and everything. Here we go, this is it, this is the one. We're on the way to the the system, I believe. Yes, we are. There we go then. Green Neutron Star coming up. Don't tune out now, whatever you do. We're gonna play with a Neutron Star with a ring. I'm sure there's some double entendres in there somewhere. Okay, popular system this one, so let's just uh, see what where we're at. And I'm guessing everything's been scanned, mapped, and... Oh, we don't want that. Hang on a minute. Belt cluster? Belt cluster first discovered. I didn't realise I didn't realise belt clusters got um a discovery tag. First discovered but not mapped. Oh sort it. Sort it. Uh that's another black hole. That oh, one. The belt clusters going off everywhere. Ooh. So what's I don't want a star. There's something lurking by it. Is it a giant? There we go. Oh, it's a nice colourful giant. Do you know what I've not found in this game yet? Oh, this is ringed, whatever it is. That's a ringed giant. It's a green giant. It'd be nice i I've not, not ever come across one of those. Oh, We'll get on to the ring neutron in a minute, guys, by the way. We're just, uh, guys and girls, apologies. Uh, let's just map the system first. Alright, what we've got left? Two more. Something over here somewhere. Uh, there. No, I don't want to start. Oh. Rocky Iceberg. One more to go. So 
So you wanted a crazy system, you got a crazy system. Right, now we've done that, we'll go and have a look at the uh, the neutron star. Which has a ring. One, two, three, four black holes. Landable. Oh, I'm glad someone mapped a planet. I mean, this must be one of the most commonly visited places. Why haven't they mapped that? Not mapped that. I am magma volcanism. No volcanism. That's the gas giant we scanned. That's an interesting system right there. So look at magma. Ugh, lazy. Oh, and we got a ringed star as well. And that is a K class ringed. Oh, what's the orbit period of that? 1.8 days on a ringed star. I have a feeling that's going to be very close to the. Uh... This is a cool system, right? Oh my words, Datsy. Land parties. I did them. We was in a. <laughs> oh my word, those were the days. Let's go and map some of these uh, planets and we'll move on to the ring neutron. Yeah, land parties, that's what we did. Uh, competitions, won loads of stuff. Had t shirts and everything. On my. Uh, actually, on my channel. My YouTube channel. Um, there might, if you have a look, have a look for, um, I can't remember what the video is called, um, we did a, nuts, that was it, Nuts Stunts, N-U-T-Z, search my videos for N-U-T-Z and see if you can find the Battlefield Vietnam Nuts Stunts, uh, yeah, love that game, great fun. Yeah, but we did all the LAN party stuff. Right, anyway, don't worry guys, we will get to the ring neutron. Um, but let's do this system to just some justice. I'll sl slap my name on a planet. Just to let everybody know that I was here at some point. What's that over there? Oh, it's just a galactic core. That's a hello ho green giant. They are very rare though, green giants in Elite Dangerous. I've not come across one yet. Alright, let's quickly map this planet. Ten probes. Ten probes? Whoa, that is quite a lumpy planet. Ten probes. Anyway, uh so ten pros but what's it? A Mickey Mouse in the face and a slap in the back of the head. So that's the ears and the chin. One in the face and one man in the back of the head. Let's see if that does the does the bits that we need. Will it fully scan? In the back of the head. Oh, no, that was a poor shot to the back of the head, to be fair. So, we're not scanned. Uh, so, I think we'll... One there. Mm, I have to let another one loose as well, actually. Just so we don't sit here and waste time. As I suspected, that should do it though. Surface scan complete. Bingo.
Alrighty then. So now there's something else that I do, and I think it's uh, elite dangerous etiquette. And I don't know what you think, but when you get some of these really crazy systems like this, you should always leave something else for someone else to map. Yeah. Uh, and there are some other things out here. I mean, most people will probably leave this gas giant, and I am intrigued by the gas giant, so I'm going to go there next, and then we'll go to the neutron star, and then we'll call it a day. Because a lot of people don't bother uh, mapping neutron stars, uh, sorry, not neutron stars, um, ringed gas giants, because they need so many probes, and the ring gets in the way, and it's, uh, can't be bothered, blah, blah, blah. But they're not that difficult to map, to be honest. So let's go to details. So I've mapped that planet. That one's been mapped by Dash Adams. Good day to Dash Adams. Well done, sir. And I don't think anyone else has mapped any of those. Oh. Did I just see Dash Adams actually? Oh no, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, you can see where I am. I'm in this system here. There's still planets to be tagged. Haul your ass over and uh, tag a planet or two. Gary Weston, hello. Uh, first time I've seen your name. Uh, you aren't too far from Kashpar. And Colonia just hopped onto the stream and wondered where you were. I was thinking uh, to gear up my cutter and head out along the neutron highway myself. Yeah. Well, if you're going to go on a neutron highway, there's nothing better than going to a, a neutron highway that includes a um, a neutron star with a ring around it. And this is where we are right now. Oh, my word. I've doubled back. <laughs> I, I was actually near the call, um, but uh, one of the viewers wanted to see a ringed neutron star, so I've kind of gone from around this area all the way back here. And I think Distant Worlds is kind of over here somewhere, so I've doubled back quite a long way past Cologne. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, but you know, I do it just because. I love everybody, and if you want to go and see a ring neutron star, then why not? Let's do it live in a stream, eh? Uh, I didn't realise I'd moved back that far. But luckily I've got an exploration ship that's pretty nifty at getting around the galaxy, so it, nowhere's too far really to go and have a quick look. And we are actually in the target system with a ringed neutron star uh, and black holes as you can see over there well that's causing quite a lot of uh, venting over there isn't it that one there hmm uh, right where are we going is it that one? Oh yeah I was going to do the ring gas giant weren't we and look at the uh, the main sequence star with a ring as well Trouble with black hole systems, uh, quite often the rings turn out being really dark and um, kind of spoils it a bit. Oh my god, is that. A no, it's a planet, isn't it? It's not a star. They look quite cute all bit in that, don't they? Right, anyway. Uh, so we'll map this. And then we'll go to the neutron star with a ring. Okay, so if you've been watching my uh, guide to exploring a galaxy, you will know that in order to map a ringed gas giant, you need to get level with the ring. Otherwise, it will take you ages to map. There we go. I think you'll we'll agree we're level. Just need to get into range.
There we go. 20 probes. Okay, I'm going to do it in... Let's do it in 10. Half the probes. Look at that lensing from the... Uh, black hole over there. Right, anyway. Right, so let's do it in 10. So, being gas giant, everyone goes, oh, it's going to take ages. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Here we go. Place your bets. Will it completely map with my ten probes? Or I end up looking like a complete noob? I think I'm going to end up looking like a noob. <laughs> Where's the gap? I was going to say, I thought I'd map that side. Okay. So I didn't do it in ten then. Right. So there's a massive gap that I must, I must have fired off a, pro, uh, a probe uh, really inaccurately. And what else do we want one? Down there. And this is on a ringed gas giant, by the way. So I'm not struggling to get past the ring here. It's, uh, it's not that tricky as long as you get level with the ring. I think I've lost my gnat tonight. I think we need to fire off another probe at this rate. 86, 87. That's being really harsh. So that is the rear side back view. So I want to make sure I get that biggest patch. Actually, that patch looks bigger, doesn't it? Go for that. And I reckon about there. So hopefully that probe will hit right in the middle of that black patch and that will do the job. <clears throat> Fingers crossed. And then we can move on to the ringed neutron. Uh, Kermit, I'm closer than I thought to there. Oh good, why should you come and have a look then? Oh seriously, one more probe. <laughs> right, uh, that'll do it. And what else we got in the text? I'm, uh, no, Statsy, tomorrow I'm going to fire up Elite again. And I'll add you if that's okay. Of course it's okay to add me. Absolutely fine. Come on, right in the middle. Oh, okay, that wasn't that great. But anyway. Scan's complete. Right. Job's good. And let's go and have a look at a neutron star with a ring. Because that's why we came here, right? There it is. A neutron star with a ring. Let's go and take a look. And the trouble with black hole systems, which this is, um, is that quite often the rings end up being black and you can't see them. So I'm going to try and make sure we get some sort of viewing angle uh, where you can actually see them. Because the rings around neutron stars go at an exceptional pace around the star. Look at that lens in. <laughs> wow. That's because there's so many black holes. We're on the way to the neutron star. Yeah, if you do play me and you want to add me, uh, no problem at all. You just need to add bloody nutter. And I, I will accept your request. Gankers welcome as well. I don't care. A 
so we're two minutes away from seeing a ring neutron star if you've not seen one before you're going to see one very shortly well in two minutes really That's what we're heading to as it's selected. I'll show you what that looks like in the Ori map. Oh, keep scrolling. Now, if you notice in the Ori map, hang on. Oh, it's the neutron star. It's not showing the ring. That'll be yet another bug. So that Ori map doesn't show a ring for a neutron star. Right, so believe it or not, that targeted where you can already see the ring. So we should have a good view actually, so I'm happy about that. It's because that star above is providing the light. That one there. So it's going to look really nice, this, actually. So it's been worth the trip. Um, but yeah, that what you can see in the middle there with that massive ring, and that is a ridiculously huge ring, um, is a neutron star. And I'm not joking, that is an absolutely ridiculously huge ring. Look at the lensing, see that red dot just disappearing off into the distance there, that is uh, lensing, that is, that, that ring is absolutely ridiculously massive. Do you know what, I'm going to stick a probe, <laughs> I'm going to probe the ring, <laughs> get ready for all the laughter. Uh, look at that, that is a massive ring. Still 20 light seconds away. What's the size of that? It's huge. Let's probe it. I'm gonna stick my probe in a ring. Oh, we're out of range. Hang on. Can't can't probe a ring just yet. Uh, let's come out of that view. Let's get a bit closer. <laughs> that is just ridiculously huge. I cannot begin to tell you how big that ring is. It's ridiculous. Behold my massive ring. <laughs> I'll probably get old at some point. I can't even deploy my probe. <laughs> oh, let's stop now. Double entendre. Uh, come on. Too far? Are <laughs> you joking? It's right in front of me. You wait till you see how fast the uh, the rocks fly around this uh, neutron star. It's, it's actually bonkers. Uh, can you see yet? Can you see what is? <laughs> no, it's not. Let's not do that. Oh, we're in the field. Okay. Uh, I didn't really want to be in the field already because I wanted to try and map it because that would just been hilarious trying to map a ring this massive. It's just ridiculous. Let's just get back in the super cruise as soon as it cools down. Let's just catch up on some of the messages while the FSD cools down. You sent a request? Oh yeah, I have your request already. Look, let's have a look. Pending from requests. Accepted. Welcome aboard, Commander. It's that easy. Uh, so thank you for that request. Yes, it is a massive ring, Gary. It really is. Holy Mother. It's a Holy Mother of a ring. I'll give you that as well. Four, three, two, one. <coughs> is it an accreditation disc? Well, it's a neutron star, so I suppose technically, 
you could say that. Um, everyone associates accreditation disks with a black hole, but the closest thing to a black hole is a neutron star, right? Le what am I? W oh, wow. Wow. Okay, that's that's actually bloody awesome. Let's get an outside view on. I'm going to screenshot of that. <laughs> that is beautiful. Uh, let's get rid of all these shenanigans. Wow. That that really is ridiculous. <laughs> that's insane. My 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 jaw is wide open. Look at that. That is ridiculous. Yes, it's got inner rings. It. I don't know what to say. That is. What is that? the mass of that? There's two rings at least. And the jet cones in the middle. That is insane! I don't know how close we need to get to. Uh, oh my word, that is just ridiculous. I just can't. Uh, let's uh, try and get a good picture of the ship in there and take a nice screenshot. Wow. It is ridiculous. See, that's why we explore, right? I mean, sites like that are priceless. Look at that. That is a screenshot right there. Wow. I think I might be here for a couple of days. <laughs> right, let's get back in the ship anyway. See if we can probe the ring. Oh my word, that's insane. Still out of range? Are you kidding, right? No, oh, it still won't let me fire a probe off. Okay, let's get closer. Challenge accepted. I tell you what I'm, I've got to do before this stream ends <laughs> is skim across the uh, the ring. Seriously, I still can't find a ring. What the hell? My God, that is amazing. Range, come on. I don't think it's going to let me probe it. Out of range still. I'm going to have to be careful, I was going to cook myself. It's out of range. What the impact? Really? <laughs> Sure, I don't get too close. Oh, get off the front. Whoa, my word, how fast are those rocks going? What? Did you see that just before it dropped out? That is in. Oh, my word. Look at the background. How fast are we rotating around that? Oh, let's get into some rocks. Oh my word. We're on the galactic merry-go-round here, eh, aren't we? Look at that. Look how quickly we're rotating around.
I'm sure it's got plenty of uh, void opals if I could <laughs> only deploy a, a probe. Not that you'd need one, right? Oh, I've got no mining gear. <laughs> I, I'll have to come back with some mining gear. I don't think I've got any on me. Wow. Let's get into the ring anyway, eh? Let's do it. Oh, wow, that's insane. Okay, that you're not going to see that very often, are you? Look at that jet cone whilst in the ring. Oh, wow, let's get more into the dust. It's amazing. Look at that. Oh my word, look at that. The star's actually flickering in the middle through the gas and the dust. Oh, there, there's, a, there's a few screenshots to be had here, isn't there? Let's face it. Come on, look at that. Wow. I'm stopping here for a screenshot. Bloody asteroids got in the way now. <laughs> oh, look, it's peeking through just about. Oh, that's really weird. Look how fast we're spinning around as well. If I, I'm not moving anything, I'm not. Um, we're totally just like static. Look how quickly we're rotating around the, that star. Look how quickly we're, we're going around. Kermit, you're welcome. You're, you're suggesting that we came here in the first place, so no problem for doing it. This is amazing. Look, look how quickly we're going around. That's stunning. get a better view wow it's hard to know what to say really you know I, I think that's absolutely stunning yeah definitely bookmark it and that's a yeah, I have the same problem. Uh, I've got a bit of a 12 year old. <laughs> um, and even that sounds wrong before I even finish saying what I'm going to say. Um, we never grow up anyway, do we? Let's face it. In terms of heat, yeah, uh, luckily this is a ring, so we're just going around in, at the same distance from the star. But it is a good point, um, Kermit. Uh, we're on 43% at the moment, so we could get a lot closer. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna. Oh, didn't want that. I think we could stay here for a, a little while, maybe. I'm really keen to know if I can actually uh, scan the ring. Try to avoid say even probe the ring. <laughs> uh, Oh, something's weird going on here. I started sinking backwards then. And I don't know if that's because this is a bit glitchy or what, but um, that, that felt dangerous for a second. <laughs> started going... It's doing it now. Oh, alright, okay. Right, I just want to try and see if I can... Um, <clears throat> Attempt to uh, launch a probe and get out of mass lock. Look at that view, though. Well, not that one. If we just uh, jiggery around a bit, 
look at that. I'm going to say it, okay, um, that's the biggest ring I've ever seen. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And how quickly it's rotating round as well, neutron star. Let's see if we can get a new super cruiser second. Oh my word, what is going on here? What is going on? What's going on here? Why is that? Okay, that's really weird. We're not in Super Cruise. We're not in Super Cruise. Why is the ring going so fast? Oh, that's freaking me out. My speed is zero. Look at my speed. <laughs> zero. Right there. Zero. What is going on? Why is it doing that? I'm not in. I'm. I'm really not in Super Cruise. Why is it doing that? That's really weird. What happens if I start descending? Oh my God! Hang on. We got stars going backwards on me now. Am I in reverse? That is crazy. I'm in normal mode. So obviously I don't want one of those asteroids to hit my ship right now because that will be game over. Uh Okay. Ooh, what's go what is happening now? Okay, this place is really weird. Um so basically what that felt like was that I was outside of the uh, area of influence from the ring and therefore it was flying past me even though I wasn't in super cruise and now I descended to the point where I got captured by the ring and now I'm in the ring and well as you can see by the background I'm now rotating at the same speed as the uh, ring, if I use the galactic core as an example, you can see we're now moving with the ring. Wow. Well, what a great visit. Um, at that point, I'm going to uh, end the stream there, and I highly recommend you come to that system that you can see on your screens right now, which is Victor Oscar. Quebec Uniform Alpha 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 Dash Alpha H177 and maybe we could all meet up and have a party I bring some tea and coffee so there we go that's the neutron star with a ring and all its crazy characteristics And so, I think the best thing to do in this scenario, when we're about to end a stream, is give you an outside view. Something like that, maybe. Wow, that is just crazy mental. Look how much we're moving. <laughs> there we go.
Okay. I could play around with this all day. <laughs> it's so weird. Right, we'll leave it there, I think, anyway. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Sorry it didn't turn out what it was meant to be. I was meant to be doing uh, how to find resources on planets, but we never got any joy there. But if you've watched all of this so far, you'll probably understand why we are where we are. But we did end up in an exceptionally cool place. Um, uh, and thank you, uh, Comet Butler, for suggesting that we find a, a neutron with a ring. And that we did. And uh, what a fantastic sight. So... I think we'll leave it there. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I'll probably record a video or something of this place um, just so that you can see it in high res because I know streaming doesn't always give um, its its best. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. And then I need to catch up with the rest of the Distant Worlds 2 fleet as well because for some crazy reason I've ended up much further away from where I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, because we come to look at this neutron star with a ring. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your views. And if you want to see more of this crazy stuff and lots of other interesting facts and figures about the galaxy, just like, follow, and subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon and you'll find out what I'm doing next when I'm going to do it. Right, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Uh, fly safe commanders have a great evening and see you on the next one goodbye